Olivia de Janeiro joins us live from the scene with the latest on what's happening there, Olivia. That's right, Joe. As you mentioned, we have just eight hours left in our cannabis countdown, so people across the recreational marijuana industry are gearing up right now to start selling marijuana to anyone over the age of 21 in the state of Nevada tonight. They do not know if this shooting was gang related. That's still under investigation, but since we were here earlier tonight, most of the police have actually left. They've taken down their caution tape and they have reopened opened Barbara Bennett Park to the public. Hey Ryan, yeah, firefighters have definitely made some progress today, but they still have plenty of work cut out for them. Take a look at the hot spots still burning tonight behind me. This is the view drivers are seeing as they're passing through this area on I-80 right now. Parts of that hillside still pretty involved in flames. Hey everyone, Olivia De Janeiro here on scene of the Hollywood fire. It's uh, burning near Nixon, southeast of Pyramid Lake. So we're on scene out here. You can see all of these hills behind me have just been charred. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this Facebook Live. We'll see you tonight on News 4 at 11. It is no secret how this crowd is feeling tonight. Every couple minutes we hear chants in support of Donald Trump and you can see the crowd is filling in here behind me. Many of their eyes glued to nearly 20 television screens here. And every time one of those screens shows that Donald Trump has won another state, the crowd erupts in cheers. And this is actually the gas station where 17-year-old Ryan Conley was last seen before he was shot to death on this night exactly five years ago. This piece of land is pretty much just an empty lot right now, but that could soon change because Apple is hoping to build here. We're just eight days out from the launch date for Nevada's early start recreational marijuana program. And thanks to this statement from the Department of Taxation today, Reno dispensaries will officially be allowed to sell marijuana to recreational customers starting next Saturday. That's right, Ryan and Madeline. We have just about uh, 59 minutes until the doors open here at Bloom. And you can see the line behind me wrapping all the way around the building. In fact, the line actually starts up again in a second parking lot. So a lot of people waiting here. But follow me over here. We're going to chat with some of the people in line right now. What are your names? I'm Ethan. I'm Cassidy. And how are you guys feeling tonight? Feeling good, getting excited. Yeah, I'm feeling really excited. Why are you choosing to stand in this line on your Friday night? We want to be a part of history, and it's great for mental disorders, which we're pretty heavily involved in, and so it's always good. Yeah, it's good to see the community come together for things like this, too. Yes, well, thank you, guys. How about you? What's your name? My name's Sean. All right, Sean, how long have you been waiting for this day? I'm about eight or nine years. Yeah, what do you think recreational sales being legal finally will mean for the state of Nevada? Oh, well, it's going to mean a lot. It's going to mean happiness. It's going to mean that hopefully everyone can come together, hopefully get rid of some crime, hopefully get rid of some drugs, because we all know that's pretty bad out here. Um, and mostly, I think everyone in this line is more happy to see everyone else happy, you know? That's, I think that's, that's going to be the best part of it, is everyone being happy. All right, well, obviously a lot of people in this line very excited to be some of the first recreational marijuana customers in Nevada. But the big question is, will these dispensaries have enough marijuana products to sell or will they sell out? Well, I've been talking with industry experts, cultivation facility owners, and dispensary managers for weeks now to see how they're preparing for the launch of recreational marijuana in Nevada. If O.J. Simpson is granted parole at his hearing tomorrow, he'll have a lot of changes to get used to in the outside world. Just think about how far social media has come in the past decade. We'll see if O.J. Simpson joins the Twitterverse anytime soon. Reporting live in downtown Reno, I'm Olivia De Janeiro. Very interesting look back in time. That's right, Joe and Madeline. We have confirmed that one young man was shot. Police are on scene here on Sutro Street. They're staging in front of the Washoe County Senior Services here to investigate this shooting. We have moved locations since our live shot at the top of our 11 o'clock hour to show our viewers, give them a closer look at the scene here. You can see dozens of officers parked on Kitsky right now. That just gives you an idea of the scope of this incident. And accompanying these officers are dozens more patrolling sides streets all actively searching for a suspect on the loose in this officer involved shooting that happened in this area tonight. Now if you're just tuning in. Well, Joe and Shelby, I'm standing at the intersection of Curry and Rhodes right now, and I want to show you this roadway here to my right. 
or what used to be a roadway. Water has eroded much of the asphalt. Most of the lanes of this freeway are ice free tonight. It looks like the plows and the salt and the brine they put down have all done their job. But on side roads, that's not necessarily the case. If you'll follow me right over here to Evans Avenue, you'll see that snow and ice still pretty heavily covering this street, which is the case for many local streets around town. That's right, Joe and Shelby. I've actually called the Nevada Division of Forestry nearly every day since we started covering the Little Valley Fire about two weeks ago. And nearly every day, I'm told no one is willing to go on camera. I'm standing on one of the properties that was severely burned during the Little Valley Fire. And as you can see, I'm surrounded by hundreds of trees that were charred black that October night. Now, six months later, some homeowners are clearing out their properties and starting plans to rebuild build their homes, but they still don't know who will remove the burnt trees on their lots and when the logging operations will happen. Meanwhile, we're learning more about what happened the morning the Little Valley fire sparked. News 4 obtained these 911 transcripts detailing uh, all of the response efforts and some of the first calls that came into 911. Firefighters are literally camping in tents out on the field behind the school here tonight before they head back out onto the fire lines tomorrow. And this one team of firefighters from agencies across the West is now overseeing all three of those fires. Those are the Winnemucca Ranch Fire, the Earthstone Fire, and the Truckee Fire. This fire is definitely not the largest out here, but it has certainly been the most destructive in the area. It's burned one home and several outbuildings today alone. Let's talk about structures right now. There aren't a lot of homes out here on this west side of Verdi, but we are told that crews are treating seven homes up on that hill behind me with some sort of fire retardant. They're not threatened at this time, but if the flames crest over that hill, those structures will be in the fire's path. So good news, they're not threatened and crews have gotten on top of protecting them in case the fire does come near those homes. Stay with News 4. We'll have more updates throughout our shows tonight about this ferret fire. But for now, reporting live in Verdi, I'm Olivia DeGeneres.